So that's Lewis's quote there, and he basically is saying that Jesus did not come to be a great moral teacher. He came to be a savior. He's God in the flesh, and that's very different than what uh, Oprah or anybody else says about him today. Now, of course, their, their response to that is to say, well, Jesus didn't actually say any of those things. Later Christians put those words in his mouth. They wrote them long after Jesus had died, and they made miracles appear to have been done by him so that his teachings would endure. And so that calls into question, is the Bible accurate? Are the uh, things that Jesus said trustworthy? We're going to talk about that in another chapter. We're going to examine the Bible and see if it is reliable and some fascinating archaeological discoveries that will help us do that. So hang in there. We'll get there. In a sense, there are only two religions in the world, do and done. And this is a good way to say it. Right? So most all religions in the world will say, do these good things. If you were in church this morning, we heard the young man come to Jesus and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, here's the commandments. He says, I've done them all since I was a boy. And then he says, uh, then go sell all your things yes. to the poor. And the man walked away uh, sad because he was uh, very wealthy. He was very wealthy. Yeah, Jesus said, sell everything you have and follow me. Make me your God, not your money. And he couldn't do it. Uh, and so... Most religions in the world say, do these things, or avoid the, doing the bad things. Give money, give time, suffer like those guys with the hooks in their back. Prove your worthiness. And so that's the religion of do, that we see here. Uh, and, and so they're trying to climb the ladder. A lot of people talk about that. Well, I'm trying to be a better person spiritually. Uh, you know, that's just not going to do it. You got the... The guy who made it pretty hot, high, but he's falling. The woman's doing pretty good. The poor guy at the bottom, he's just struggling to get on the bottom rung. None of them are going to make it. The other side of this is done. And Christianity is like a not climbing a ladder to God, but rather it's God coming down in an elevator. Jesus comes out, takes your sins upon himself, wraps his arms around you, gets back in the elevator, and takes you to be with him. That's what Christianity is like. Number six, Jesus ascended to the right hand of God. So he lived, he died, he was raised from the dead. Uh, and 40 days later, he ascended to the right hand of God. And this is a handy little timeline. You know, it helps me to remember things. It's kind of off the screen a little bit there, but it says Palm Sunday on the left. That's when Jesus enters Jerusalem. Uh-oh, we got more problems. There we go. Monday, Thursday is Thursday of that week. And then here comes Good Friday. Come on. Come on, good Friday. There we go. And then you have Easter. So this is all a, a week's time. It's the, uh, Easter is the third day when you count Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Jesus said he would rise on the third day. Then 40 days later, Jesus ascends into the sky and a cloud covers him. He doesn't leave us. We just can't see him anymore. And then 10 days after that comes the day of Pentecost. It's written about in Acts chapter 2. So that's just a handy timeline of events. So um, from all the way from Easter to Ascension is 40 days, and Easter to Pentecost is 50 days. So Jesus ascended to the right hand of God after he had spent 40 days on earth. Why? Number one, to convince his disciples that he really was alive. Uh, let's turn to Luke 25. Oh, sorry, Luke 24. There is no chapter 25. That would be a trick. So Luke 24 is on page 1047, I guess. Well, let's go to 1048. So 1048, Luke chapter 24. And we're going to look at verse 44 and following. Five minutes? Okay. Are oh, we ready now? Okay, well let me finish this section, then we'll eat. Okay, so... Uh, it's page 1048. 1048. And we'll start at verse 40. So this is Jesus showing up after his resurrection. And so he says, it's really me, I'm not a ghost. Verse 40, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? 
they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. So even though they saw the wounds in his hands and feet, they just couldn't believe it. And isn't this great? You know, again, if you're making up a story, uh, you're going to say, oh, and of course, they immediately received him as Lord and rejoiced that he had risen from the dead, as they all knew he would. But instead, the Bible says, these, these guys didn't believe it. And why would they? Everybody they had ever known who had ever died didn't live, didn't live again. Uh, and so they didn't believe it. So Jesus finally said, you know, in our language, he would say, anybody got a hamburger or like a, a peanut butter sandwich? You know, something I can eat? And he ate some fish in, in their presence. So he had to convince them that he was alive. And then number two, to give them further instruction about the kingdom of God and their mission in it. So for 40 days, he instructed them. Okay, so we're going to take a break here. Let's stop. And we'll eat.